Hey folks, Dixie T here, and um, no worry, my review of No Surrender will be coming very soon, uh, and uh, and all that good stuff. Wanted to finish the script last night. I was thought I was gonna be done, but Colin just went to sleep from I don't know why. Woke up before the game, the NFL game, which I will probably talk about in this video. Um, but um, yeah. Uh, you know, I was, uh, I'm finishing up the, uh, the touches of the script, and I'll probably retouch it and everything else tonight, so don't worry, um, just, everything will be just fine, um, and everything else, so, um, um, you know, will not be. I will be touching up the script tonight, so don't worry about that. Um, and it will be up. The review will be up on Saturday. Trust me. I got everything else locked down. Don't worry. Uh, uh, my radio show. You know what it is. DC I was talking about Nexus, but you know, link in the description. Um, not really. I'm not really gonna talk about uh, that last. Um, not, not this in this video. Oh man. Boxing left and right. Um, I'm going to be mainly talking about uh, the uh, Vikings and the Saints last night. Uh, Saints. Um, you know, it was. Um, I'll just. Really, um, really good, um, just very good stuff from the uh, New Orleans Saints and the Vikings. I got, I got a comment. I yeah, watched the game. I woke up before the game, by the way. I missed the uh, the crappy stuff from Taylor Swift and uh, yeah, Drew Matthews, man. Because yeah, because when I think NFL, I, I think Taylor Swift and uh, Dave Matthews did. Man, I, I really think that really pumps me up, NFL. Great call on that. Yeah. Ugh. All right. Okay. Anyway. Um. This um. Uh, this really does uh, uh you know, just. I mean, the, the way that the, the Saints played that game was probably one of the, um, I mean, wow, it was really good. Even though um, uh, they really did not capitalize on, um, you know, they did not really capitalize on um, their turnovers. But at least they got turnovers, not like the Vikings, which I will get to. Um, but honestly, I got to give really props to the uh, left tackle. Uh, Really, it's just someone who, um, the guy from the left tackle for the New Orleans Saints, uh, who really shut down Jared Allen. I, I really just, uh, it, it's just something, um, really did. They, they really, um, just, I got to give props to, um, you know, just really good stuff. Uh, it is, I think it was, Jeremiah Busrud, I think that was the left tackle. Um, that, uh, yeah, it was that was actually a very good uh, game they had. It was just, I mean, he really did. It was like, wow. I mean, he really took down um, <laughs> uh, Jared Allen, even though he had help with uh, you know with uh, you know running backs or fullbacks, but the guy. Really took down one of the best defensive players in the game. You gotta give props on that. I mean, you just wow. I mean, wow. I, I I mean, I don't know. Maybe I'm messing up. Someone can tell me, but the person who really did that. I mean, you have to. I mean, seriously, Jared Allen. Seriously, looks like a guy who really fits his namesake, the team namesake, the Vikings. 
And you know, I mean, seriously, look, the guy is really someone you really, you can imagine just going raping and pillaging villages just for the hell of it. But after, like, on the off season, he just goes and, like, is little, I mean, like a boat or something, just terrorizes villages for, just for the uh, for shits and giggles. Because, and, and, you know, that sort of thing. He can, I mean, he basically just tears through offensive linemen and gets the quarterback, or, or not so running back, um, for losses and such, and causes havoc in the backfield. But yet he was mollified by this uh, left tackle. He really did. I mean, seriously, someone needs to get him a pay raise or something because I, I honestly think that, because I think Jared Allen is, for me, probably one of the best uh, defensive ends in the league, and he was shut down to, uh, last night. So props on the Saints' offensive line really just, and props on the left tackle. Who really shut him down? Uh, other than that, this, the uh, Vikings did a pretty good job on defense, but they didn't really capitalize on any turnover opportunities. They could have had like a couple of interceptions, but yet they dropped it, and you know that's that's going to probably hurt them if they not if they did not capitalize on interceptions or capitalize them at least get them. They're not going to really uh, win any games or even much less playoff games or championship games. Um. Favre got pretty good protection. Oh, he got like sacked a couple times, but I I, I truly think that um, this I really think the Vikings had a pretty good. Uh, I mean, the Vikings offense though, just to me, the Vikings offense really missed uh, uh, Sidney Rice. Uh, the Vikings really looked like they were lost out there. Adrian Peterson. Really, he did a pretty good job, but nothing really, um, um, you know, nothing. I mean, really did not do anything. Uh, that's a real problem. It just they need, I mean, the Vikings really need to do something. They need a spark, and hopefully they're going to look and say, you know what? We need to do something. Maybe get a solo to really connect with Brett uh, Favre, uh, you know, Brett, uh, Brett Favre, because... You can sign all the wide receivers or not uh, um, you want, but the, if they don't have any chemistry, it's meaningless, and that is going to really hurt this team for the next couple for for the most of the season. Is that when the Sydney Rice does get back, how is that going to chemistry affect the team? How is this going to go back and forth? It's going to be uh, how is it going to get back in rhythm and Brett. And by the time they have to really have some good chemistry on that team. Because uh, they really, I, that's why I don't see them winning, um, going to the postseason this year because they don't have any chemistry with the offense and everything else. So I, I expect to see Green Bay leapfrog them, uh, leapfrog over them in the division. In fact, I think, call me crazy, I think Detroit might actually leapfrog um, Minnesota because I have a feeling because um, I think Detroit is slowly but surely getting better and he's gonna, they're going to surprise some teams this year. I think they're going to really uh, be good this year, uh, Detroit. And Minnesota, even though they have a good defense and everything else, the wide receivers aren't there and they don't have any connections with Brett. Don't be surprised if this team does not go to the playoffs if not have them oh, below 500 record this year. That's what I got to say. Don't be surprised by that. Uh, for, for the Saints, uh, they, need a, they really should have uh, capitalized on opportunities um, and really pressured uh the secondary um, looks like they did, but the wide receivers and such did not. They didn't really. I feel like they didn't really attack uh, this, uh, this, the uh, Vikings secondary as they did, like a couple plays, what have you. And they and stopped really running the ball. They came too one dimensional, but they fixed that over the second half. They started running the ball, and you see that they just uh, really grinded it out. And, and that's, I think, what the Saints have to, because I think they do have a good running game, um, minus the whole Reggie Bush thing, because he's basically just a wide receiver, a punt returner. He's no damn, he, he is not a running back. That's just me. Uh, and, uh, yeah, I think the Saints, uh, that actually my Super Bowl pick, by the way. Um, I think they're going to, I just don't see any team, they are a complete team. I, I don't see any team, not only in the NFC or in the AFC, that even close to them. Um, maybe Cincinnati, but time will tell for that because I don't see them. Maybe Baltimore or Cincinnati, but 
at the end of the day, I just don't see the I just don't see Baltimore getting over that hump with the Colts. So it's gonna either be I know who the NFC um, is a lock in the NFC is gonna be the Saints. It's the Saints to lose. Um, my personal pick is going to be the Saints to win the NFC, but it's going to be uh, a three-headed race. It's going to be between Cincinnati, um, the Colts, and the Ravens. And I think the uh, Ravens can't really, I think it's going to be the Ravens. They're not going to really be a factor because they can't be Peyton Manning. And until they uh, see in my eyes they can do, uh, they can do that, but, uh, I don't see them actually being victorious. And... Um, I think Cincinnati is going to really surprise some people because they got that good offense, and hopefully, I think uh, um, Colson Palmer will probably shock some heads and everything else. So, look out for that as well. But it's going to be the, it's the Saints' world right now, and the Saints are going to probably dominate for the next well next two or three years. Uh, that's all I got to say. Duke CT here. Peace and love. Don't forget Duke CT Lounge. Link in the description. Hope you can join me. Um, and uh, hopefully y'all can, um, you know, leave some comments and such and see how I can improve the radio show and have you. Call in if you need it. And, um, you know, that sort of thing. Anyway, it's Dixie T. Peace and love. See y'all when I see y'all.